Ties between Israel and Azerbaijan are growing and the president's advisor on foreign policy is in Israel this week. I sat down with Hikmet Hajiev earlier. Here's what he had to say. It's wonderful to have you with us in the studio. Welcome. It's a pleasure is mine. Thank you. And welcome indeed to Israel. Uh, it is just a few months, isn't it, since Azerbaijan opened its embassy here in Tel Aviv. How would you characterize the progress of relations between the two countries since then? Uh, first of all, it's a great pleasure and honor, honor to be in Israel, back to Israel. And uh, everybody knows about Azerbaijan and Israel having a, a strong friendship, ties on a friendship and a strategic partnership. But uh, among, uh, along with that, and Azerbaijan and Jewish people having a centuries old uh, traditions of their bonds, of their friendship and partnership. And currently, Israel and Azerbaijan a partnership and cooperation in many spheres are developing dynamically, and there is a very good progress. And uh, with, uh, while having Azer Israel's embassy in Azerbaijan, Azerbaijan also reciprocated diplomatically to establish it in a full embassy as a state of Israel. And what we see that with the establishment of uh, Azerbaijan's embassy uh, in Israel, uh, we are entering into qualitatively new level of cooperation between two countries. All right, and we will talk about that cooperation uh, in a bit more detail in a moment. Um, but we've had lots of Israeli officials going to Baku, President Herzog, the Foreign Minister Eli Cohen as well. Um, any plans for President Aliyev to reciprocate and visit Israel? Indeed, in bilateral relations and high-level uh, visits are crucially important. And uh, we are also pleased that uh, incumbent uh, prime minister in his previous capacity and Israel's president and visiting uh, Azerbaijan and also cabinet ministers are regularly visiting Azerbaijan. As such, Azerbaijani cabinet ministers and high officials are also regularly visiting Israel. Such a dynamism between uh, cabinets of two countries and high-level official visits are important component of israel azerbaijan cooperation. Therefore, never say never. It's always in the possibilities and to further uh, strengthen our cooperation through direct channel of communication between our leaders. And we also particularly pleased that President Herzog we uh, see visited to Azerbaijan and his visit also coincided with the National Day in Azerbaijan and we very much appreciate. So we're seeing a, a real growth in ties between Israel and Azerbaijan. And ties between Israel and Turkey have also improved in recent years. Uh, did Azerbaijan have a role in that? Uh, to an extent, yes, and uh, we always say that silent diplomacy is always uh, effective. And there is uh, such a uh, saying in diplomacy, and particularly Azerbaijan diplomacy cherishes that. And we say that we would like our friends to be friends amongst themselves. And therefore, Azerbaijan is also glad to see with continuing their friendship and mutual understanding between Turkey and uh, Israel. And Azerbaijan also contributes to this process to develop within a dialogue and communication and better understanding between two our uh, partners and two our friends. And Azerbaijan will continue continue to play its role. And uh, Azerbaijan also had a one suggestion and view why not to strengthen our cooperation in a trilateral format where Turkey, Azerbaijan and Israel could come together in a trilateral format of cooperation. And of course, driving that partnership between Azerbaijan and Israel is a, is a very strong defence partnership. Um, and your country is involved in a, in a conflict uh, right now uh, with Armenia. Uh, has the defence partnership with Israel given Azerbaijan an advantage in that conflict? Indeed, we're also thankful to the State of Israel for uh, defence cooperation and military cooperation. It's a, one of the signs of confidence and trust between our countries that we are cooperating in such an, a specific area. Azerbaijan was subject for unjust treatment and military occupation. And uh, Azerbaijan's uh, uh, war, and in a 44 days war, that's called, against a military occupation of Armenia, and defence cooperation with Israel, and particularly with the defence equipment, and plays in a crucial, important role. And uh, but we are thankful to you know, Israel and Israeli people that it's also well inscribed in the memory of Azerbaijani people that we very much appreciate. Uh, but of course, Azerbaijan and Israeli cooperation among within a defense and security field is much broader. It covers agriculture, education, uh, education and some other many fields that we also, on a regular basis with our Israeli friends and partners, identify new areas of cooperation for the benefit of two countries. But of course, defense cooperation is also crucially important that Azerbaijani government and Azerbaijan people highly appreciate. And, and while I have you here, if I could just ask you um, about what's happening in Nagorno-Karabakh. This is the contested mountain region of Azerbaijan, um, because it is being widely reported that Azerbaijan has gone back on the terms of a 2020 ceasefire that was brokered by Russia and is not allowing any food or medical aid into the Armenian population uh, of that region. Um, is that true? What's happening? 
Well, for Azerbaijan's strategy is that war is over, we are in the process of the winning of the peace. But unfortunately, what we see from Armenian side, Armenian side doing all the best to lose a peace. But we, we, won't, we don't want to give it a chance to lose a peace. And uh, Azerbaijan actually suggested for Armenia to sign an peace treaty. And uh, sometimes in a diplomatic circles, it's called like in a Camp David process, not in a Palestinian track, but in a track between Egypt and Israel that changed the entire map of the Middle East. And therefore, there is such a suggestion. We are working with that, and the United States and some other countries are supporting that process. But second track, the second layer of that process is a reintegration of Karabakh uh, to the political, economic, and social spectrum to Azerbaijan. But unfortunately, what we see uh, on the ground, there is an a separatist entity subordinated to Armenia and financed and also supported by Armenia, they would like to continue their grey zone status and not to integrate to Azerbaijan's political, social, economic life. What we're saying is that one road is good, but two roads is much better. Therefore, Azerbaijan has built new roads and also connecting with the mainland Azerbaijan and also giving them a chance to Karabakh Armenians to communicate with the mainland Azerbaijan as well. Road is not only one way, there is always in a two this ways. This is the Lachin. Uh, Lachin Hankandi road that connects mainly Armenia to Karabakh, but we also say that there is a Agdam Hankandi road that's in a flat, that's more efficient, and logistic and transport wise, it has much more capabilities and it also direct access to all markets of Azerbaijan, including the all markets of our neighboring countries, in a sense, Armenians from Karabakh and residents of uh, Armenian residents of Karabakh will have a better chance to communicate internally within Azerbaijan and in some other uh, uh, regional uh, countries as well. Therefore, it's an opportunity. It's also an opportunity for the integration process. But you see that they say that no. It's not unacceptable. We would like to have a gray zone. We have, would like to have an army on the ground. They have 10,000 strong militia groups and ter uh, terror groups as well. And they're also uh, threatening uh, with a missile, some other uh, military capabilities, Azerbaijan civilians as well. There wasn't a, such a practice as well. But uh, everybody should also understand that as a sovereign country, Azerbaijan any longer cannot afford to have in a gray zone, uh, such as militia groups and armed forces, and also illegal uh, separatist entity on its soil. That is the core of the problem. Unfortunately, what we see is in a wave of the new stereotypes and also media campaign and disinformation campaign against Azerbaijan. So you that yes. coverage. Okay. Well, um, Israel is also, of, of course, um, in, a, in an under the radar conflict exactly. with uh, Iran. Um, and Azerbaijan, of course, shares a border with Iran. Um, does Baku share Jerusalem's concerns about a nuclear Iran? And is there any concern about repercussions from Tehran for Azerbaijan because of your country's relationship with Israel? Because uh, Azerbaijan has an independent foreign policy, and therefore Azerbaijan is choosing its inner friends. And this friendship for Azerbaijan, and in this case particularly our cooperation with the state of Israel, is for the benefit of the Israel people and Azerbaijan people. What we say about foreign policy and also bilateral cooperation is not an exclusive, it's an inclusive process, and it's also not against any third party. First of all, it's for the benefit for two countries and for two people, and there is also historical background of that. It's a with such a cooperation and friendship between Jewish people and Azerbaijani people is running through our DNAs. That's an unforgettable and will continue to serve as a flourish. Again, it's not against anyone. Iran is in a neighboring country for Azerbaijan, and Azerbaijan's policy also is that to have a stable and mutually beneficial cooperation uh, with all our neighbors. It's always good to have a normal relation uh, with your neighbors. If it's Azerbaijan's policy, there wasn't a certain misunderstanding and miscommunication between Iran and Azerbaijan, but through the diplomatic channels of the dialogue, we are trying to resolve that and we are also receiving positive messages from Iranian side and we are also engaged diplomatically with our Iranian counterparts to turn that page and to establish much more favorable uh, atmosphere for the uh, cooperation uh, and dialogue for uh, the, our wider region and also in Iranian Azerbaijan bilateral cooperation as well. Okay, well, you, you mentioned the um, intertwined history of the Azerbaijani people and the Jews, and there is a, a Jewish community living today uh, in Azerbaijan, a, a Shia Muslim country. What is life like for Jews in Azerbaijan? Uh, really, they are our brothers and sisters, and we are proud of that. Uh, the Jewish community is uh, such an, an inclusive way and a part and parcel of Azerbaijani society. And uh, we are proud of that there was a no single case of anti-Semitism in the history of Azerbaijani people. And we also highly appreciate and value contribution of the Jewish community to the flourishment of Azerbaijan's culture, Azerbaijan statehood, not just today, in the late 19th century or even far before. And they played in a crucial role. And in the meantime, Jewish community also 
also throughout the uh, uh, history found a shelter in Azerbaijan. And we are also proud that maybe sometimes in a difficult times we shared our bread with our Jewish brothers and sisters, especially during the time of the Second World War. And they also migrated from the eastern and western parts of the Soviet Union to Azerbaijan to Azerbaijan and so on. And they are part of our society and uh, they also continue to contribute to Azerbaijan's development. And they also continue to contribute to the strengthening of the partnership between Azerbaijan and Israel. It's like a uh, part of the humanitarian linkage and people-to-people -people contacts. It's a backbone of Israel-Azerbaijan's friendship today. And just before we finish, uh, you're just here for a couple of days. Can I ask what you're hoping to achieve during this very brief visit? And do you like coming to Israel? Of course. It's always been a pleasure to be back to Israel. I'm also very much pleased to see, and every my visit, I see the further development of visit. And sometimes you couldn't recognize as a city, and the country is flourishing, and the cities are flourishing. And between Israel and Azerbaijan, uh, there is always an open dialogue and consultation. world is changing. A lot of new uh, issues are emerging. And in the meantime, we have identified strategic ambitions in Israel and Azerbaijan cooperation, sky is the limit. And we are always in search of trying to identify new areas for cooperation between our countries for the benefit of our people, for the welfare of our peoples. Well, Mr. Hajiya, thank you once again for coming it's in. It's a pleasure, Mine. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you.